going on everybody hit pause back for the next part of this tutorial and in this part I'm going to make the scoop so I'm just gonna make a cylinder and rotate it down and zero it out just right click on my spinners and now I can get it wherever I want and I'm done with the scope yay so I want the scope to go to about there, a little bit higher. Okay, and forward wise, the length of it is going to be about there. Okay. And actually, I think it's a little too forward, like so. And that means the height's a little bit long. Like I said, I'm going to do a relatively simple scope here. Nothing crazy, and I do want a good number of segments, though, so 18 is going to stand. Now, the cool thing is, is I, it actually comes default like it's like it shouldn't be called cylinder, it should be called scope, because it has exactly the right amount of segments to do something like that. Okay. And if I wanted to make that a little bit of an increase, you know, depends on how I want to do it. Some scopes are kind of like this, and then they're like shallower like that, all right? Others are both directions, you know? There's, there's, a, it, there's a million manufacturers, there's a million styles, there's a million everything, so kind of who cares what you do. So I'm going to now create the lens. Oops, I didn't hold control when I did that, so that's going to be easy enough. It's just an inset. Very simple. Again, my scale is insanely too small. Uh, and the rim's going to be roughly like that. And the extrude is going to be huge. So I'm going to pull that back to about there. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm actually going to pull this one a little bit forward because that one. You want as much light entering here as possible, so they tend not to stick it all the way in there because then it'd be in shadow and things wouldn't go so well. So we'll keep that there. And now what I want to do is take these verts here and use a sh uh, skew on them. I always want to say shear, just kind of depends on the program that you're in. And you can see, hey, look, that does nothing, but if I change the axis, you can see that gets all crazy. If I make it X, you can see that's what I want. I'm just going entirely too far. Okay. So, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm complete J-hole here. Jack-hole. Let's uh, cut that out. I'm supposed to be shearing different. Okay, so we'll do that again, we'll just paste. And it doesn't like me doing that, so it's trying to keep its like original position and stuff, so we'll do it like so. I'll say about one here. Okay, collapse two, hit one. I still have these selected. Now I kinda go like that. Now it kind of goes against what I said. Like earlier, they don't want these in the sun, but I'm looking at my scope, and yeah, it's kind of sunk in there like that, so... <laughs> so much for my theories on what should happen. Uh, you would think that this, you'd want this to be shadowed, and that this would be picking up as much light as possible, but... I guess it would get a glare on there, so it makes sense. This is not like a... It's not a, like an optical thing. Sometimes the optic, like the scope will actually have like a fiber optic tube that runs down the length of the scope, and you, some people are like, well, what is that? That's actually to pick up light to illuminate the reticule uh, because that gets like tied in directly to the actual reticule on the scope. So, and they'll sometimes they'll have a green and a red one, and that's just because usually that those scopes tend to have like a switch on them that can swap back and forth. I talk like I know what the fuck I'm talking about, but trust me, guys, I don't. I don't know anything about how any of this is made. So, my uh, ability to uh, invent this stuff is based solely on comic books and TV.
But it's not like I don't own one. I kind of feel like that's like needs to come back a little bit more. Okay, so moving on, we're going to now create the brackets or the mounts, whatever you want to call them. I'm just gonna make a cube here, zero it out. Actually, I'm just gonna align it to the scope. All right. All right, there's the bracket done. Thanks for watching. So what I want to do is actually align it to center to center in the Z position, like so. Okay, now I can convert it. And we'll come here and we'll bring this down and a little bit closer. And what I want to do is actually connect this with two segments. Okay, and I kind of want to stretch these out. The quickest way to do that is just to turn it to verts. I'm going to keep it about there. Make control I. Control I. Oh, it did do it. It just lagged. That's why I didn't end up doing it again. And then I want to kind of go like this. And then I'll take the whole thing and scale it down. And then take the whole thing and move it kind of like that. And then I'm going to take these segments here and do a single connect. Okay, and now I want to extrude this. And if I zero everything out, the first thing I can do is give myself a little bit of width and then pull this in just a little bit to kind of sem quasi simulate the notion that this thing is um, two segments, okay, without having to have faces or anything like that down the line. All right. And I want to make the clamp screws, so let's inset that. Okay, and then extrude that. Okay, just extrude by zero, and then what I'm going to do is make this planer in the Z. And move it down just a little bit. Like that. Now this I don't plan on doing any kind of um, subdivision or anything on it, so... What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to delete this face and this face and get these and hit S. Zoom in, hit S to be snapping to points and just level that off like that. Okay, hit 1, Control A and weld and I need to just make that point zero 0.01. Okay, that will drop those four verts and now I can take hit S again I come off a of snapping because if you don't you get this weird thing that keeps showing up and it kind of screws with stuff so keep snapping off until you need it it's a very handy piece of advice I got for you guys right there okay I'm gonna drag that down a little bit and I think I'm wondering if I'm going to feel better about this if it's a little bit shorter. Now you'll notice that I penetrated here. Um, I can actually fix that by getting, I just grab those faces, right, and then hold control to get these verts. And uh, constrained by edge, and you can see I can pull this up and down at will. So I'll go like that. I just want it to be a little bit tighter along the scope. So it's not something that stands out like a turd in a punch bowl, you know, I don't want it to be all crazy. Okay, now I'm going to need two of these, and there's no reason for me to paint more than one, so I'm going to make it an instance. So with an instance, hopefully everybody knows what that is, but just to reiterate, an instance is a f like a, literally a floating copy, so whatever you do to one happens to the other. Okay, it's handy, very handy, handy. Okay, so now I need the rail, and to be honest, I'm going to kind of hack and cheat because I don't want to make another box. So I'm going to do this clone to object, like that, which takes this out of being a uh, editable thing here, and I'm just going to cap the top. Okay, kind of a quick cheesy way to get a box out of your stuff. So what I want to do is scale it out. and bring it
kind of like that. Okay. And now I want to take a ring here and connect that in half. Pull this down just a little bit. Take these two, convert that to verts. That way I can take this and do like so. Okay. Now the rail can be done two ways. Um, one way is to do like this. Make a bunch of segments for it. Which you can end up with quite a few polygons, to be honest. 380 polygons. Um, it is the one that's going to hold up the most under lighting conditions, though, because it is, go like from the side, you will see the ridges. The other way to be to normal map that, and it'll work from this angle here, no problem, but if there's the weapon's ever to the side, it will fall apart. Uh, instantaneously. So it's just kind of a matter of what you want to do. Now what I'm going to do here is go to modeling and do dot loop. Okay. And give, with that done I can hold control and get those faces and I can just delete them. And now I can do the same thing again dot loop minus here and here and bridge them. Okay, it doesn't like that, so let me see. Let's isolate it because it's gonna, everything else is gonna be kind of in the way. Um, the reason that it's not working is because sometimes it kind of wants a manual selection. You can see even there it doesn't want to do it. So the bridge tool does work, but it doesn't know where to do it. So when you have to do a bunch of bridging like this, it's best not to have any selections so that you can just actually have the bridge tool out like this and it will allow you to basically go across here like so. Okay, and you don't have to re-click a tool, you don't have to hold control, you don't have to do anything, you just click, then click, then click, then click. I'm hoping that if I hit 3 here, I'm going to come off the bridge tool, and hit control A and cap, that it's not going to try to cap across stuff. And it did not It did it fine. So that's the other way to do it. And you can see that I'm still looking at 380 polygons, because I went from 3 per these sections to basically another 3 for those sections. So I didn't add anything by doing that. I added it when I added the segments, of course, but I didn't add anything uh, based on the other factor. So now what I want to do is take the ends here, and make the connection for the screw, okay? Because this bolts basically bolts onto the top of the, the the weapon here. So let's take a cylinder, and I'm actually going to use auto grid here to cheat, so I can draw right off the surface. And the only thing I'm going to need to worry about is my Y position, okay? Now this being a bolt, I don't care to have this be a bunch of segments, okay? And it's up to me. Do I want it to be a bolt or a screw? Now, a bolt works fine. And considering that it works fine, I'm going to go ahead and stick with it. Because who really gives a crap? But I don't want it to be all that pronounced. I want it to be kind of a Allen wrench. An Allen key. Okay. So, given that, I'm going to keep it as such. Now I'm going to take this thing here and I'm going to center the pivot and the reason I'm doing that oops, center to object, I forgot to hit the button is that I want to take this and hit symmetry on it. Now when I highlight this I'm actually moving the symmetry here if I flip it, you can see and I'm just going to align that okay, like so and then I get an even spacing All right, and I'll just I'll keep the modifier on the stack if I want to maintain symmetry but I want to turn this into an editable poly I can interject an edit poly modifier and then do collapse to and that keeps symmetry or does it oh now I need to unflip it or that's kinda of weird huh hmm. 
weird. It just, I guess, just kind of a visual bug wasn't showing up. But now I can pin that. And if I really want to, it's kind of hard because it's going to zoom me out a little bit. Uh, I can inset this, which is going to make it go all kinds of crazy. Like so. And then extrude it, which is going to make it go all kinds of crazy until I pull this down. And then what I'll do is actually... Um, I may not want to do this, but I'm kind of thinking of just hitting it with a collapse like that. Okay. It's a very simple piece of geometry that I have here that I don't really need. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole setup and I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Okay. So there you can see I have a pretty generic scope. I mean, it doesn't get any more generic than that. Now the question is, do I want to have any tick adjustments on this scope? Um, meaning, do I want to have any dials, you know? Uh, it's not that I can't. It's just a matter of, like, do I, like, you remember, I want this to be like a very generic basic scope. That's the point of this one. This is your starter sniper for the game. This is like what you get before you get the the really good ones, you know, the the high tech, the more higher tech ones. Um, I'm also going to move the whole thing back just a little bit, like so. And I'm actually pretty pleased with it at this point. I don't really need to do anything more. Um, I could make uh, the cylinder connect come down through just for you know like to say hey, this was manufactured like that but honestly there's no gap here so I'm not that concerned with it you'd have to get a very specific angle to see that that's missing and from any other angle even looking at it you wouldn't as long as there's no gap you wouldn't think anything of it and there is no gap if I was you know more concerned about it I could sink it in just a little bit more but then you gotta worry about the fact that, you know, I, if I was going to do that, I would sink it to at least here to make like it was built off. And then you can see that we have issues with the center. So I'm going to keep it pretty much dead on the surface like so. Okay. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Definitely a rifle now. It's definitely got a scope on it. Um, and now I think this is going to be difficult. But I'm thinking of tackling the notion that I feel like my breech and my mag are considerably longer than they need to be. So, given that, I'm half tempted to combine everything so I can pull all the verts at once. Because otherwise, I'm looking at kind of a problem. I could attempt an edit poly modifier here because that will allow me to get all the verts. I think, I think, I only think at one time and move them back like so. Now everything's fine except here. Okay, you can see that it's broken here. Uh, officially broken here. Okay, so I actually need to take these and I'm going to look at the front view and like I said this is going to be slightly difficult but it's very subtle I need to move that down just a hair. Okay, everything else here was pretty much flat so that does that does feel significantly better now I feel a little bit better about it the bullet fits in there okay let's go back to perspective okay uh, from a certain angle by the way the bullet will not fit in here like it will hit both sides I believe um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it so that it is relatively relatively tight like a tiger I could, however, just scale the bullet a hair, okay, and 
I don't want to actually collapse all the transforms, I just want to collapse the scale. So you can do that here on hierarchy. Just uh, collapse scale, don't collapse transform. Reset X form, by the way, is just hitting these two one right after the other. Uh, and a few more operations in there. I don't want to lie and say it's that simple because it's not. Um, this piece here, I kind of want to take these points. And even though my gun does actually display this kind of behavior, I just want to see if I can get away with this uh, skewing this. I don't think I'm going to honestly don't think I'm going to be able to get away with this. Let's check what axis I need. Okay, none of the axes seem to do anything, so let's try. Okay. I kind of want to even that out to match the gun a little bit more. Now, I can I end up with a little bit of curvature here. The good thing is is that it's only moving the points straight up and down. Um, but in this case, by moving these points up, I am breaking it. Uh, and the only real way to fix that that I know of is to do it manually. Like so. And I actually need to do these two just a little bit. Very subtle. Okay. As I move them down, you can see what happens. Okay, this I don't want this. I want to keep that as in line as possible. And this one actually needs to go a little bit more like that. And that doesn't feel like entirely broken, and it feels like it's a little bit more like you know, hey, that's how it's supposed to be, kind of thing. Uh, even though, yeah, it's weird. I still think it's weird. So aside from the top of the mag and the trigger, the trigger, if you can't do a trigger, you know, just give up because that's the easiest thing in the universe. Uh, I'm about done, but there is one thing here and I'm going to do it real quick. I'm just going to hit this with an auto grid and throw this here. Now the angle is actually broken, so I'm going to fix that and I'm just going to rotate it uh, by 180 and make sure in the Y that I'm centered because now it's just a matter of taste as to how far forward I put this. So I'll put it like right here and it's really not that tall. And I'm going to give it eight segments. Okay. And what I'm going to do is hit control shift P to turn it into an edible poly. And now I'm going to create a seam across here and get rid of one of these faces and now I'm gonna do hinge from edge with options and the edge I want to pick is this one here and I want it to flip over 180 and I want to give it three segments I could go more you know, eh, you know but three pretty much covers it uh, sometimes I do four I'll, I'll go with four because it kind of doesn't matter. Um, and now this is a little weird because it has a hole in it. So what I'm going to do, and like I said, this isn't going to exactly work. In fact, I don't think it's going to work at all. Um, it's pretty much not working. There's two ways I can make the hole. And I'm going to do the other way. I'm going to Boolean it out. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to snap the point to this point here and then I'm going to come off a snap and that keeps me centered. Okay. And before I do that though, actually, I kind of messed up. Um, the reason is, is because there is actually a face left over here. It's actually on this side. 
inside there and it's also in here and that will break the boolean operation for sure you can actually select that uh, edge it's going across and hold control to get the polygon and also by doing that you leave an open edge so I need to weld this okay and do the same thing here right now I think I'm safe to do the boolean we'll see it's under compound objects boolean pick up a ram b and boom all right and there we get the hole now if I when it's done it's actually going to maintain as a boolean operation so you need to convert it now I just want to hit one and check to see if I get because every once in a while you'll get a bunch of um, you get a bunch of like all these verts like going down the line right here like all crazy if your booleans are messy um, but in this case it looks like it was pretty clean so not fully concerned about it I don't need the face that's up here at the top so I can get rid of that and I can pull this down so I'm not wasting any UV space for no reason I want everything to be on smoothing group one except if I ring that and grab that I want that to be on smoothing group two okay and what is this thing this is like an attachment point what can go here a strap a bipod uh, lots of things okay uh, these are on many many rifles if not all of them I don't think all of them but I'm gonna keep it about there okay that just adds, you know, a small detail like that isn't going to hurt anything. It's 72 polygons, and it does go go quite a long ways in terms of, you know, adding to the the feasibility of the whole thing. The other things I could add would be a um, right about here or so. There is a safety. So I'll just do auto grid, and then just so that, that my box isn't drawn all far away all right and then I'll move this in like so and it needs to be much less wide okay and it fits about right there and I'll pull it down okay I can go ahead and convert that what I can do here is click this, hit grow, hit control I, which puts me to that polygon there, and delete it. Okay, extrude's gonna be all kinds of crazy, so I'm just gonna hit OK at zero. And there's two ways I could do this. I could just do it like that, or like that. And that's pretty much what it is. It's just like a little thing that you can pull up and down to be honest it, it sticks up a little bit higher than that though goes to about there and just for the sake of argument you can see my near clip plane's a little funky that's pretty much all she wrote now I could do a, something a little bit more interesting than that not by a lot more interesting there's not a whole lot I can do um, I can skew this again. Okay, find the axis. If none of the axes work, try 90 degrees and then find an axis. There we go. That's the right one. And just go like that. Just kind of match that slope there. What was the difference between doing that and just doing this? Nothing. Okay, but just showing you multiple ways to do it. It would have made a difference had there been a curve here or anything weird. Uh, there are cases where you do need to skew and not grab points. Another thing I'm going to need to do is round this beast here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take these faces, I'm going to go by edge, and I'm going to move this back to right there, okay? Like so. And actually, I'm going to undo that just a little bit, and I'm going to move it to here. So it's a little bit wider. And now I'm going to take these and inset by a very slight amount. OK. 
Okay, and I'm going to extrude and hit OK. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grow this selection and I'm going to detach it, uh, which I always lose. Detach to object. Okay, and I'm going to isolate this rather hastily. I'm going to get this segment here and just delete it and grab that, that, and that, and bridge them. Okay, so I just capped it back off. And now this piece, what I can do is take this segment here and say bye bye. And I'm kind of thinking. Now, the cool thing is, is local here actually understands the normal direction of your of your um, selection, which can break you, actually, can mess things up. You can see that it's not wanting to go by the, um, the correct, you know, like it, it won't let me go by center, right? And if I go by verts and I do local, actually it works out okay. Sometimes that can fail. Well, I was on edge, so it uh, helps in that regard. All right. Now I'm going to take these and chamfer them by a very light amount. Okay. A little bit less like that. And just out of curiosity, set flow turns that into almost a perfect, almost perfect, by the way, this this edge here is much shorter than this edge here, unless I'm looking at an optical illusion, but I don't think I am. Okay, and it actually, let me give it three segments, okay, and what I want to do is use this to create a cylinder here. I'm going to go auto grid and the, you might ask well why are you doing that? The reason is is because by doing this this now has the correct local axis. Okay, And now that I've got that, and the other thing I want to do is I actually want to um, go center to center so that it's centered here like so and I can actually dump this guy. This is too black for me to see what the hell is going on. So I'm going to take this now and kind of just stuff it in, but get it pretty close. And let's go ahead and make the radius smaller. And what I want to do is I actually want to give myself like four height segments. Okay. And now I'm going to hit it with a few modifiers. Number one being taper, but I want it to curve just a little bit, not a lot. Number two, I want to bend it 90 degrees down. Okay. Now it's all floppy. Probably not that much. That's about right. Feels okay. Okay, now I'm going to do something very temporary here. I'm going to go ahead and convert it. I don't care. I'm going to extrude this by zero and hit OK, and then I'm just going to hit collapse. Boom, and that pulls it to a center. And now I'm going to create a sphere using snap to point, which is odd because it wants to snap to everything and its mother until I kind of isolate it here. Okay, I can pull that down to match. And my sphere does not need 32 segments because that's like way too much. But I do want to keep um, kind of a power of 32 in an essence. Um, 8 is probably a little too weak. 12 is usually good um, because, you know, it's divisible by 4. Uh, the radius... If I actually make the radius a hair smaller, 
I can um I can kind of link it up but I won't do that I'll keep the radius just a little bit bigger okay because that way I don't have to have 12 segments on this cylinder you know okay and then the other thing I don't need on the cylinder is that face there and I don't actually need that face there okay I just needed that to align everything okay the um, ball is actually feels entirely too weenie so it's more like that and that is how mine is it's pretty um it's pretty narrow at that tip there and it definitely starts at a tapered base however this segment here is a little these are a little less tapered on my gun it's a little bit more like that more tapered just at the start okay now everything kind of pops out nice um, if I really wanted to I could maybe connect this I'll move it keeping on edge so that I can make sure that I maintain this direction here and now I can take this and extrude that by a very 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 tiny amount now I want to do that local normal okay can't go much farther than that however I gotta be careful because I did end up with these faces here so sometimes it's just easy to grab the cap or the uh, open edge and just delete it all right there is one more of these on the other side okay and this one um is essentially kind of the same thing but this one's the safety okay this actually pops up um, when it's on fire which makes it when it's pressed down and then I, my gun actually has a secondary safety too uh, which is a button on the side right here but I'm not gonna do that because that's completely out of the view so I'm gonna keep this what this what this is is this this being the safety this is actually the bolt release so you have to pull this up and what it actually does is it comes like all the way up and kind of rotates so it's kind of like this curved thing here um, but because I'm never gonna have the players um, do that what I'm gonna do is actually lock it down like that so it's just a little bit of a detail on the side it will help you know it just break up the plane factor of the whole thing um, and that is actually how it sits until you're ready to take the bolt apart or pull it you know actually remove it from the from the barrel there okay so the only thing left to do is to make the magazine top more correct you know I said I was gonna do that but I'm not. I'm going to do that in the next video uh, because I need to end this part as early as I can. So this is hit pause, making the colors better. <laughs> not exactly signing off yet. Okay, let's. Um, I'm going to add one more custom color. Just kind of a little bit less of a nasty dark, like so. And then I'm going to take all of these pieces and do the same color for those. Okay, I might as well make this whatever off brass color is the closest I can get. Probably be that one there. And if you take a look, it's not too shabby. No textures or nothing yet. But she's looking kind of pretty can a party indeed and yeah it'll work 
It'll work. Um, the other, the one thing I do want to do here really fast is I need to collapse the edible polygon modifier, and these are, if you notice, are um, they're on smoothing group one, and so are these. Uh, what I did was add that bevel section here. So I'm going to select this whole group, which is easy to grab because it's very far apart from everything else. And I'm going to grow it one time, and I'm going to take that off of one. And I'm going to put that on two. Okay. I'm going to hit. And now what I'm going to do is select these and shrink. Actually, I'm going to go one more segment. That way I can shrink twice. Okay. And that gives me this section, and I can put that on smoothing group one. All right, so you can see what that does to the smoothing there, which feels good, I think. If I don't like it, I could take both of these little edges off because I kind of feel like it makes like a bit of a bulge here, like a little bit of a dramatic change there. But for now, I'm not hating it, so whatever, whatever's clever. I got some faces here that I may want to flip flop. You kind of uh, Max kind of blows at remembering what you were looking at. Like if I have, if you have like an edge selected and I rotate, it's like around that edge, but as soon as I'm not having that selected, oh look, it's gone. You know, kind of frustrating, but it'd be nice if it just, rem if you deselected it, still remembered the last thing you selected, or if there was an option for that, would be nice. But anyways, hit pause signing off. Thanks for watching.